This is Chapter 2, Key Issue 1, Where is the World's Population Distributed? So the goal is for population concentrations. The students will be able to explain where the population concentrations are in the world, historically and currently emerging, so where is the population growing now. Students will also be able to explain the global population growth trend since prehistory and explain when population, global population began to grow exponentially. A sparsely populated region section learning goal would be that students would be able to describe what types of places people avoid and choose to live in. And the third section, population density, the learning goal would be that students would be able to define the three types of density and explain how by comparing the different types one can gain an understanding of the carrying capacity of the land. Concepts to know are demography, the J-curve, the location and characteristics of population clusters, sparsely populated areas, ecumene, arithmetic, physiological, and agricultural densities, and arable. Well, the world population growth since around 1 AD or 0 has grown very, very slowly until about the last 100 years when you can see it curve up drastically and start growing exponentially. This graph of world population growth is called the J-curve because as it grows very, very slowly and then the last 100 years has been rapid growth, and we have reached 7 billion at this point. What's significant is that most of the world population growth has been happening in LDCs, where 80% of the people live. That's the fastest growing. China and India each have over a billion people, which makes up one-third of the entire world's population. And with the fall in food death rates, people are living longer, and so we see population growing very rapidly, and this um, drop in death rate will definitely impact population growth. So when you look at this chart over here, you see the blue part of the graph represents the industrialized countries, or NDCs, and the orange or gold part of the graph represents economically developing countries, or LDCs, and you can see around 1950, you see that the population growth explodes, especially with LDCs. Now, demography is the scientific study of human population characteristics, and the reason why we study population is for these three reasons. More people are alive now than any other time before. Since the mid-1900s, we've seen a rapid increase of population growth, faster than any time before. But most significantly, that the population growth is virtually only in the LDCs, and that is a concern, as LDCs do not have the resources and the means to be able to deal with population growth. Um, and so this is going to become not just a, an LDC problem, but a global problem. Here's a cartogram that shows uh, population size. The larger the size of the country reflects um, the size of the population. So you can see India and China have very large populations, as do significantly um, United States, Brazil, Indonesia, Japan. And you can see how Russia is very small, and even Canada is like a ribbon on top of the United States. So this is a cartogram. Into the content, population clusters. There are four regions that most of the world lives in currently. And that is East Asia, which is largely made up of China, but includes Japan too, and the Koreas and Mongolia. But China is the most populous. South Asia, which is largely um, India, and there's other, you know, Nepal and Bangladesh and, and Bhutan. But India has three fourths of South Asia's population. Southeast Asia with Indonesia, the island of Java being the largest in Indonesia, and then Europe. Now, the difference between those 
um, where people live in the Asian region and Europe is rural versus urban. Most of the people, majority of the people, still more than half of the people in collectively these Asian regions, more than half of them live in rural areas on their farms, not in the city. Europe, on the other hand, three-fourths of the people live in urban areas. Uh, less than 20% live on farms. So those are the four regions where most of the world lives. People in Europe live mostly in cities. People in Asia live mostly in rural areas. And here is a dot map that shows um, where the population clusters are. Sparsely populated regions. First of all, Ekumen is the permanent human settlement um, across the Earth. Um, most people live on about 5% of the Earth's surface. Um, it's about 70 to 75% is water, then we have about 30 to 25-30% to 30% is land. A lot of that land um, is too dry. People avoid living where it's too dry, it's about 20% of the Earth's surface. They don't like to live where it's too wet. The rain actually um, depletes the soil's nutrients as it acts like a sieve and drains the nutrients away from the, the, all the water. People don't like to live where it's too cold. Those are usually near the poles in the high latitude climate. And people don't like to live where it's too high in elevation, which tends to be a little bit cooler. The exception is that people in Latin America, which would be Mexico through South America, to the South America, and in Africa, like to live in the highlands, especially along these tropical areas, because they can escape the heat and humidity um, of the tropical climate. All right, different densities. Arithmetic density is the total number of people divided by the total land area. And here's a map that shows, uh, here's a choroplast map of the Goods Homolocene map projection, which is an equal area map, also shaped fairly accurate. And this shows where you have high arithmetic density. And you can see in India, Japan, Philippines, um, England, looks like Belgium and, and the Netherlands, Israel. Right. All right, then physiological density is the number of people, but now we've taken away the land that's not very livable, and it's the number of people per arable land, which is the land that's suitable for living. So this is going to be usually a higher number than arithmetic density because you've subtracted the deserts or the mountains or the lakes or the marshes. People don't typically live in these areas. so you now have less of an area with the same amount of people. So it's usually going to be a higher number. And here's a core plus map showing the physiological density. You can see now things have changed. You see Egypt has become much more dense because typically people just live along the Nile River in Egypt, not in the desert. So there's a lot of land that is not livable, not suited for living in Egypt. When we look at the we defining carrying capacity, carrying capacity is the land's ability to support life, and something that has a land that has high carrying capacity would be very fertile land, very flat, um, lush with vegetation and water, and lots of people can live on that land. You can think about mother. Earth, Mother Nature providing for population in a very rich and beautiful environment. So that kind of environment would have high carrying capacity. It can support a lot of life. Low carrying capacity, on the other hand, is land that's not very conducive to living. It's very harsh, rocky, too dry, too wet, too mountainous, and it does not support a lot of life on this land. So you can think you know, Mother Earth is harsh and does not provide a suitable land for people to live. We'll come back to this. 
So when we compare the physiologic and arithmetic population density, we can gain some insight about the carrying capacity. So if the physiological population density is high, such as what we saw in Egypt, it has a much darker color, um, then the arithmetic population is low, the overall number of people per, per land area. If the physiological is much higher than the arithmetic, then we know that a lot of the land was not suitable for living. You had to subtract the areas that were too cold or too uh, rocky or too harsh or too dry to people to land, to prove to live. So in this situation where you've got the population, the overall population now living on a smaller area to land in the entire country, with a high physiological population density, so there's a lot of pressure put on that land where people live to produce the food and the supplies needed for that population. Right, so this is when the carrying capacity of the land is kind of being stressed out a bit to provide for the population um, living in that area. The last density is agricultural density. This is the number of farmers per farmland. If the agricultural density is low, such as you see in this red box with one farmer for all this farmland, this would be something that's typical of like the United States. There are very large farms in places in MDCs like the United States due to advanced technology. So usually there's very few farmers for the farmland because they have very huge farms. On the other hand, if agricultural density is high, like all the dots inside this box, it's almost like all these farmers have their own little small farms. This is typical of LDCs, where there are many farmers, and for the farmland they have, and so you have small farms for these farmers. 